Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to the Influential You podcast. I'm still Josh D'Amigo, program faculty member for Influential You and your host for this weekly podcast. At Influential You, we teach you how to take charge of your career and amplify your professional influence. Since 2009, we have helped thousands of business owners, executives, and entrepreneurs become more influential, more rewarded, and more you. Today, we welcome Jose Lamas Gonzalez to the Influential You podcast. Now, Jose is the general manager of the El Sombrero Mexican food chain of restaurants. El Sombrero, or El Som, is a small family-owned restaurant that started in Manhattan Beach, California. And Jose is the third generation Mexican-American business owner in his family with El Som, and he's an incredibly talented speaker, which I'll tell you more about in a second. He's also a Toastmaster, he's an award winner, and the creator and host of the Your Life in Restaurant podcast, where he uses his specialized knowledge in the restaurant industry to help small business restaurateurs live a better life by building a better restaurant. Today, we'll discuss his studies with Influential You and how he's integrated what he learned in the Fundamentals of Transaction program to guide the direction of his own life and business. He joins me from Los Angeles, California, so hit that like button, that thumbs up, that subscribe button below, and join me in welcoming Jose Lamas Gonzalez to the Influential You podcast. Now, Jose, before we begin, you and I met at a Toastmaster meeting where we were both guest speakers, and I was out in Sacramento, California in like a small little booth, yeah. but I'd love to have you tell our listeners your version of the story of how we met. Okay, great, man. Well, happy happy to be here. Thank you for the invite, and hopefully we got some value in this conversation. Mm -hmm. It was funny. We both were scheduled to speak, and it was in London. It was a London-based club. I don't know if you remember. And it was super early. I believe it was 7.30 in the morning here in L.A., and um, you went first. You did your presentation, and I went up, and then I get this message. Like, hey, we'd love to chat. I'm like, who, who is this guy? I mean, I saw his presentation. It seemed interesting. Well, I remember then you confess, you're like, okay, best case scenario, I sign him on for the program. <laughs> Worst case scenario, he says no. Most likely scenario, I get a burrito from this guy, right? <laughs> and then, and I, remember, I remember you clearly said that. I'm like, okay, I'll talk to this guy. He's funny, you know. He, we're, and, and you love soccer. You got me there. And you saw my, my right. soccer. And so you got me there, man. And, That's uh, so funny. And there Go LAFC. <laughs> that, that's so good and I, I remember thinking who is this guy that is up there speaking with all of this excitement all this enthusiasm all this panache and i remember thinking i want him in my study i want to get this guy in this program i'm going to do whatever it takes to get this guy in so be, that was my initial reaction of who you were and and where you were in my world was seeing you speak with me to a group of people twice our age yeah. and Watching you just hold your own on that stage. And you were a, a fairly new Toastmaster. Is that correct? Like a year Yeah, old? correct. It was actually, I was doing it for um, preparing for the competition. So that's I right. Was, you, you just yeah, won. it was one of those. Yeah, well, and then we won't go into what happened after that as far as your Toastmaster com com competition. But what we will talk about is what was life like before Influential You, before you meet this crazy guy named Josh, before you're jumping up and, and speaking with me. Yeah. What was your world like? How, how did it go for you? Well, I always been I always been a go getter, Josh. You know, I always been I always know there's something more and and trying to look for something more, correct? But I felt at that 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 time in my life, I, I was missing something. I was I was like I I've been reading books and I've been you know joining Toastmasters and trying to work with, but I was still missing something. I'm like I'm missing something because I saw other people that were where I wanted to be. So I was like, how, how can I get there? What, what, what link, what mystery knowledge, what, what haven't I found out that, that will get me there? And mm. that's where I was at. And I was very confused. I was very, I didn't even know if I wanted to keep working in the restaurant industry. I didn't know if uh, I had no idea. And, you know, it, and, I, and I've been working on it since I was in diapers, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And for our listeners, real quick, just so we know a little bit more about you, you're, you know, mid thirties, yeah. uh, you're, you know, family owned business yes. and you identify as a producer personality. So you, no right. matter what happens, you're going to work harder than me, uh, <laughs> no matter what the project, but 
you also have this ability to connect with people because I think you have a very strong, you know, performer side or so you're very, you're right. very, you have a lot of those kind of skills. Producer, I, leaning you know, performer. <laughs> say, say that again. Producer, leaning performer a little that's bit. That's right. That's right. You're kind of yeah. in, that, in that section. So you, you say that you had like some struggles in the breakdowns in career yes. and money. Like you yes. had some dissatisfaction and was it that you weren't making enough money that you were settling? What was it in those two conditions? I think um, I was doing okay with money, but I, I think I was settling. Hmm. And it's um, something I learned in the program where sometimes we, we have our aims and, and, and we settle. We settle instead of, you know, study and practice and look for the answers to go to what we really want. And I felt I was just settling. I was like, okay, I'm doing okay. Okay, this is all right. And I, but I wasn't happy. <laughs> I was just going through the motions. I was just settling. And I knew I had to do something else. And there you were, man. <laughs> well, seeking you shall find, right? And I think what yeah. you find with a lot of people that put themselves into organizations like a Toastmasters, where mm -hmm. you're practicing skill sets that are uncomfortable. Right. You really, part of the reason I'm there so much is because you find so many people that are willing to work on things that are really difficult. And that's what we do. We work with people that are ambitious, that are going to move in a way. And, and you brought the ambition, my friend, and you met me the entire program. But before I get into the program, I'd like to ask, we don't talk about happiness, like in the sense of like, we're not in the search or in the game for helping people find happiness because mm -hmm. you can't measure it in a bucket. Correct. But what you can measure is satisfaction. And I'd love to hear your opinion of kind of that after, you know, hearing this program, like, yeah. do you feel like in the, you were unsatisfied for all these things when you're looking for satisfaction? Did you know what would satisfy you? Tell me a little bit about that. Um, yeah, I think um, you're right. Happiness is, it can be measured in a bucket. And I thought, you know, what would satisfy me after doing the six month program? And I think if I could get, clear about my career then for me that was a win if i could just get clear on, on on what to do in the next year or so and i i found i i, I got that identity and and that's what changed my life basically I, I i learned what career is an identity and that's what i did not understand before fot that that your career is actually your identity correct yeah yeah. Like, so was, yeah. Go ahead. And right. what well, just I didn't it never occurred to me that's like, well, yeah, you ha you have to be the guy. That's what you gotta do. So you gotta be, you know, the restaurant guy. You gotta be the catering guy, the whatever you want to specialize in, whatever you, you bring to the marketplace, people's gotta know you as that. And I didn't I didn't know that. That's so good. And we're going to talk more about that in just a second, because I love where you're, where you're that, that cliffhanger that you just did there for me. So we'll be back with Jose after a quick reminder. This podcast is made possible by Influential Use Self-Guided Program Thrive. If you haven't heard of Thrive, it is a self-paced learning tool that gives you all the tools that you need to level up, regardless of where you are in your career. We have CEOs, we have salespeople, we have people all over the place and in between. We used to only be able to give this away for seven days, but now I don't know how we're affording to do this, but you can use coupon code 30 days for a free 30 day trial of our Thrive program. You get 30 days to test it out. We're literally giving you a month. Once again, the coupon to use is 30 days, 30DAYS. Or in the US or Canada, you can text the word Thrive to 805 262 9008 and we'll send that registration link right to your mobile phone again text the word thrive to 805-262-9008 you can cancel at any time go to influentialu.global forward slash thrive and use keyword 30 days now back to jose now jose i'd love to hear this because you were naive to your career identity but you started to learn that you were naive to a lot of different things. I'd love yeah. to hear about, first off, the word naive, yeah. what that word means to you before and after, and, and what did you start to discover? Well, naive, I always thought it was, you know, something careless, something, you know, people are, you get making a fool of sometimes if you're naive. And um, then from the program, I learned it was actually a mindset. Mm. And I had no idea what this mindset was. And 
it's a mindset sometimes I was in it for sure. And listeners out there might find themselves in it where you're either ignorant about it, which I thought I was, or you're arrogant about it, which mm-hmm. sometimes you think you know, but in reality, you don't know. And uh, that's when I this to me. And I felt I was more in the ignorance side where I just didn't know what to do. I didn't know. I, I needed direction. I needed, you know, clarity in my life. That's so good. Ignorant or arrogant. I love the way you just put that. Um, And for those listening at home that are like, wait a minute, what do you mean state of mind? These are the states of mind that we teach. And they basically go from, we want you to move as an ambitious adult. Most people are moving naively or as adults who just wait for things to happen to them. uh, Or they're in despair where they know they don't know and they can be really costly to deal with. Now, I love that for you because you started to define these things. How did you start to define your aims for those different conditions of life? Well, first, obviously, when we started the program, you know, we set, we set aims for in, in health and in, in money and in career. And so that helped, you know, going through just starting asking yourself, what do I want? That's where we all got to start. Like, what do I want? What do you want? What do you want to accomplish? You know, sometimes we don't even ask ourselves that question. And you guys, that's what I loved about it. That right off you asked us, well, what do you want? What do you want to accomplish? As you guys say, you hold this mirror to us where we have to face ourselves and realize, okay, what do I really want? And set some time to think. And from there, I started thinking, okay, what do I want? Do I really want to be here? What do I do? I want to build something from this or, or what? And I remember talking with you. You're like, dude, you, you've been on this, your family, you like it. Use all that experience, use what you have to, you know, build from there. And that got to me. And from there is where I started. You know, I already had this podcast idea and I wanted to expand. So I just kind of started putting everything together, which helped me out a lot. Uh, we're going to talk more about your podcast. I, I said that? Like me? I, yeah. I, yeah I did. Every <laughs> once in a while, a blind squirrel finds you a You know, we, you guys always <laughs> offer those uh, sessions, and I was the first one to jump on board, man. I'm like, I'm, I'm not, I'll take it. <laughs> Every time. And I'll, I'll tell you guys this that are listening. If you have, if it's been a while since you're in the fundamentals transaction, I offer my clients check-ins along the way, places that you know, they might get tripped up. And every single time I sent that email out within like two minutes, Jose was on that <laughs> calendar, right? Like he was like, hey, he couldn't get enough. And I really, yeah, that's yeah. what I love about you is you constantly show up and you do the work that's expected. And I feel like that was really rewarded in your studies. Now, Absolutely. I'd love to talk to you about this. You, you said career is all about telling others what you can do for them. Or another, mm-hmm. way, other play, another way of saying that is uh, the help that you can provide, the human yeah. resource that you are correct now you've started to craft that narrative for yourself yes what what have you come up with what is your aim for career uh, well now i'm trying to be i started thinking about my business started thinking okay how can i integrate all of this and i've been trying to put my specialized knowledge into how can i market this and put it in the marketplace and and what do i want people to come for me for so, for example, in my business, I got real clear that, you know, we've been there a long time. We know how to do things right. You want great food, great service. You need to come to us. This is where the good stuff is. This is where we know what we're doing. And you just got to put yourself out there and put yourself out there. And it increases your business. Another aspect was our catering. I always wanted to increase our catering. And we used to get all this catering requests. And I just didn't know what to do with it. So I started to focus on one thing, which is our taco bar now. And people love taco bars, man. You want to do a taco night? They love taco bars. And I started to really focus on that. And my catering just took off. And obviously using the the transaction cycle from you guys. And that helped immensely in that with that situation. And that's what I want to be known now. My catering is one side. My business is one side. And the podcast is another side. That's That's something I'm working on. But all falls into, you know, uh, mastery in restaurants, special, special in restaurant, knowledge of restaurants. Yeah, it's really good using that general and specialized knowledge that you have, not going back to, you know, reinvent the wheel or, you know, right around our 30s is about the time when we, we, we have to start getting really serious because, you know, those, those things are coming for us that 65 and better and all those years are coming. They're, they're still ways away. 
But in our 20s, we're kind of like, yeah, we're okay. But right mm -hmm. around where you were at 34, uh, you started saying, hey, you know what? I need to think about this stuff. Where do I go? And the rest is history. Now, I'd love to hear this because you said that you took something really special out of the four quadrant uh, personalities and, transaction and, yes. and, and moving transactionally. Can yes. you tell me a little bit of what you've actually done in your organization once you started to learn all of those different personalities and how they fit? Yes, of course. I would love to. And I actually talked with this with my study group at the time when I was trying to implement this. And what we learned, there's four different personalities, uh, performer, producer, inventor, judge. And we're all different, right? So I'm a producer. I like to get things done. I like to put my head down and, and work, right? But in the transaction, certain personalities fit better as you're moving along. And I got that. And I didn't know that before. So in catering, when, as I started expanding, it, I would do everything. You call, I'll be the one trying to sell you the stuff. Then I would, then I would literally be out there making your tacos <laughs> and then I would move on the transaction. So I would do everything. And then from there, I'm like, I have different types of personalities. So I actually, one day I put, I drew a quadrant in four and I started putting, I wrote inventor, produ performer, producer, judge. And I wrote down all my team members' names from looking at the characteristics you guys gave us and just from knowing them where each one of those was. So then I identified which ones could help me with that. So I'm like, okay, this performer is gonna go here. This judge is gonna go here. And that worked great. It took me to a, even another level. So now you wanna do a catering order with me? You don't talk to me, you talk to my performer. And she's great. She. And there's just something from that. She'll sell you things I don't even, I wasn't even capable of doing. She'd be the type that builds that relationship and tells you, hey, how about some taquitos with that as well? I wouldn't do that. But she's great and she's natural at that. So then after that, she just passed me the thing. Here you go, Jose. This is what we need. And I'm a producer. I get to work. I get it done. Obviously, then you need to get some feedback. How did it go? Was it enough food? Uh, did we satisfy that? I was very bad at that as well. So I needed I needed to pass that. So I got this guy. He's total judge, man. He's judging everything. <laughs> Thinks nobody does anything. You know what I mean? So basically, I'm like, hey, dude, like, I'm going to pay you. You just need to get in touch with uh, the persons with the catering, send them the survey, talk to them, then come back to me and tell me the good and bad. Because sometimes mm -hmm. the restaurants, there are babies, you know? It's hard for us to get some feedback, but but we need it. So it kind of makes it a little easier when he, the judge tells me like, yeah, we need to work on this, 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 and that. So that's better. Or we're good at this, this, and that. Wow. And it's something that I think really got to my bottom line. And mm -hmm. I mean, my catering is just taking off, man. It's, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. Wow. That's so fun. And I, I like, I'm, I, we just had Fiesta in Santa Barbara. Yeah. And so I just got in line for, um, uh, um, Oreos that you dip into batter and they're like deep fried Oreos. That sounds delicious. Like, I mean, all of this stuff, right? It melted in my mouth, but it was so funny. There was a huge breakdown in communication in the tent that we went to. And yeah. I literally was sitting there watching it thinking this could be so much better. And I just heard the solution. So hopefully one of them is listening and, and will listen to our podcast and come and jump on your podcast soon. Cause we're going to talk about that in a second, but you said there was a third largest principle that was really important to you. And it was the 13 steps. Now, yeah. um, before we get into that, I want to start with, with something that I think is really special that you and I share. We both did the program in our mid-30s at 34. And we're in the program, uh, we're in Fundamentals of Transaction with other people in their 40s, 50s, 60s, you know, sometimes 70s. <laughs> and you are about to basically talk about the 13 steps, which is the backbone what is it like being a young business professional sitting in classes with CEOs, entrepreneurs, people of that caliber, and basically being able to go toe to toe with them on these kind of processes and procedures for your business? Yeah, it's, a fun, it's funny that you just said toe to toe because that's the first thing that came up to me. In there, there was people making way more money than me with bigger businesses. and But in there, you know, I'm young. I was a lot younger than most of them there and but you felt as an equal you you felt as an equal and, and you build that sense of community like we all have this aims and we we're all going to this program and we could learn from each other 
and you felt you truly felt as an equal even as a, I was I was young but it's also makes you think hey they're 20 years older than me and they're still trying to find this identity they're still trying to how how cool is it that I'm 20 years younger and what can I do where will I be with this information 20 years in the future mm. So good. All right. Now, 13 steps. Explain to me what that is and why is it important? 13 steps. That's your favorite. I know every single time we talked about that, you mean 13 <laughs> steps, 13 steps, 13 <laughs> steps. <laughs> and so basically, it's this thing where you use it to reach your aims. It's this framework that you guys from FOT give us and literally can do anything with it. Anything, anything you could think of, you could put it through this framework. Starting with step one, you know, articulate your aims. As I said, what do you want? Ask yourself, what do you want? So you go there, then you go to step two, the evidence, the state of mind, proof fitness, all the way down till you plan for reinvention, start all over again. And it works. And I remember one time me and you were in our, in our chats and you literally took me in, into your workshop, man. You showed me your tools and what you do with it. And, and I really appreciate that. It helped me see the picture more and you just had all your 13 steps there and you were i don't remember i think it's when you were being promoted and you were working on some new things and you just laid it out and i was like holy cow you could really just use this for anything and i started also applying that so i get in step one what's my aim and mm -hmm. type away step two and you keep moving forward until you get to the 13th step and you'll be there <laughs> so good I, uh, 13 was my college soccer number, side note, yeah. just in case you, I have it tattooed right here. So, you know, maybe that's why <laughs> 13 steps is so big. I, I think it's really funny. Um, maybe not funny is not the right word. I think it's fascinating too, depending on the personality of the person that's studying, mm -hmm. how they gravitate towards that thing as a producer personality who tends to love checklists yeah. is 13 steps like a gift from the heavens. What is yeah. it like? I mean, is it like, yes, like, thank yeah. you. Yes, absolutely. This is that's what producers need. We need to know how long, how many reps, how many steps, and th that just puts it all in there. Like, do this, you'll end up there. And that that's what producers are. So we need a system like that. And I think that's why it was so so close to my heart. Now, <laughs> it's so good. Like yours. Yeah. You mentioned in the show notes that, that there were a few other things: the recommended readings, learning mm -hmm. to schedule better, yeah. accurate thinking. Yeah. I, I'd love to hear anything you have to say about any of those things. Of course. I think uh, the, well, one was scheduling. And just talking back on the uh, producers, understanding what, what personality you are. So, for example, uh, you guys always tell us to schedule your study, right? And for me, it would just be just random scheduling, you know? And from there, I learned that I needed to know what day, how long, and what was I going to be doing. And that helped so much as a producer. So I would be like, Wednesday's morning, 8 to 8.45, you're studying for 45 minutes. And I would just watch the clocks. 8, 8.45, I'm done. And that's a producer's work. So that was something of scheduling. And I do that even with my workouts now. Eight laps. What am I doing? I'm doing eight laps. Or I'm doing 50 push-ups. And that, I schedule my calendar like that. And it's, it does a lot of things for me. Also, accurate thinking. Accurate thinking was something I had never heard of it. And you know how we always have this goal, this goals, aims at the beginning of the year? Okay, I'm going to go walk 100 times. All right, so I could do it twice a week, two times 50. Okay, 100. 100 is my goal. Well, that's not accurate thinking, my friend. And I learned that because that's how I used to do my goals before. Accurate thinking is really thinking how the year is going to look like. Well, I'm taking a two-week vacation. Well, that's not going to be 52 weeks then. That's 50 weeks. And then maybe I'll be sick. And then maybe, so that's accurate thinking. And, or maybe I have a wedding to go to, or that's what accurate thinking is. And it's bringing into real focus what that goal should be. So you're smarter. And it's funny because now with my wife, as she was doing her goals for this year, I was like, you didn't think accurately about that. She's like, what are you talking about? You didn't think accurately. I just kept saying that. She didn't really listen to me. But well, now halfway to the year, I'm like, accurate thinking. <laughs> so you'll do better wise, next time. <laughs> wise man, wise man. Uh, I, uh, I'm not married, but I've been already told that you're not supposed to correct your wife. So I, I, good job. Good job. Just letting, just guiding her that way. That's so fun. Now, uh, 
I'm interested in what life is like now because you've talked a little bit about it. You've kind of hinted at a couple things, uh, you know, accurate thinking. I think what I like about what you just said is many people follow some sort of big, hairy, audacious goal. You hear mm -hmm. that kind of talk a lot. And right. it's a lot of shoot for the moon so you land in the stars. Right. When in business, what's really, really valuable is to call a shot and hit it repeatedly. Mm -hmm. And so I, I love how you put it when it comes to accurate thinking because you give yourself space to be human. You right. give yourself space to have breakdowns. You right. give yourself that which will do, as philosopher Johnny, uh, Johnny, John, Dewey, John Dewey says, and making sure that we're really thinking accurately about what we want so that when we call a shot, we get known for being able to constantly hit that. And I just, I love that for you because I just hear so many people regularly going, no, 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 you need a bigger goal, a bigger, now I, I need something I can hit and this is what yeah. it'll do for me. And that's what I want. So I love that. Now, now it's all about the future. Now what life is like now. So I'd love to hear what's life like now for you. Well, first and foremost, I, I found my identity I, I know what I want to do. I know I have a five-year, 10-year, 15-year plan. Where do I want to take my family business that I'm the third generation now? What do, what's my vision for it? Where do I want to take it? So I became crystal clear about that. And we want to expand. We want to continue to, to expand. We want to continue to expand our caterings. And, and so I got that identity. And now I, I, I got cards. I didn't, have, I didn't even have business cards then. I didn't even have, I had the regular ones, but not nothing with my name on it, nothing with, and it all, all that came to me as we were built, uh, so I was finding out this identity. I'm like, I need my business card. I need to know. So now it's like, hey, I'm always inviting people like, hey, come on over. Well, I didn't do that before. And that's all about the identity. It's all about, to me, I see like having a big sign right here in my chest, you know, and say, hey, I'm the restaurant guy. Like, come to me, come go get some Mexican food. If you need some cater, that's that's what career is all about. Letting others what you can do, let others know what you can do for them. And I really, I'm very focused on that now. That's and so it's good. helping my business. And I'm I'm meeting more people. I'm building more connections because sometimes I just talk to random people and they'll be like, hey, I, I own a restaurant too, or hey, I do internet, or hey, I do. And that's something. Now I could transact for help, right? And I could see how they can help me as well. So that's something I'm, I'm focusing on. Also my career and obviously my podcast is something that I want to grow. I want to help others learn from my journey, from my eyes and get some motivation. And I'm in there with you. You know, I'm in there with you. I still work. I was working last night, Taco Tuesday and hustling in there. I'm still there. But I also have this other part of it which is I want to study, I want to learn, I want to speak and, and stuff like that. Yeah. That's so good. Um, speaking of Taco Tuesday, next Taco Tuesday, John Patterson and myself will be in Burbank at the Influential You Accelerator. I just want you to know it's between nine and 12 Tuesday morning. Yeah, I'll let you put that on your calendar and, and attend because I want to see you in person and bring some tacos. Secondly, yeah, of course, <laughs> you also had your catering take off and I'd yeah. love to hear about how it's going and your goal and how you're going to do for next year. Yeah, well, it's going great. First of all, I started tracking it. I wasn't tracking it. Learned that from you guys. You got to track your goals. You got to track your aims. You know, and I remember you guys give us that, that spreadsheet to track it. I did something similar to that. So I track the day of the week, the day of the month, what I'm selling, all that. I'm tracking that. I didn't do that before. So now I know where I'm at. And this year, it's even better than last year. So now I'm setting this goal for, I'm trying to double it by next year. So I'm trying to be, you know, I have a, a clear goal of where I want it to be and we're growing and, and we're getting better at it also. We're getting, since we're starting to do so much of it every weekend and every weekend we're booked. And now it's, we're getting better at it. I'm buying new equipment. I'm buying everything that I didn't have before. So it's definitely growing and you can now grow your resources and, I'm also hiring more people to help me with this. So now we do deliveries as well. That's something that people would always ask for us. Can you guys deliver it? So we deliver it. We set it up. We bring the chafing dishes. We bring, and then we always throw in a surprise. I can't give it up. If you want to know the surprise, you got to get a catering for me. But we always throw a surprise and people love it. <laughs> What's your favorite item on your menu? I think <laughs> so many. Like, I, I eat there six times out of the week. So I, I'm always eating everything. 
So what's what's the one that, the first one that pops in your head? First one is the Viking burrito. I know it's a Go crazy on. name, but people love that one, man. Right, grilled so steak, what's... cilantro, onions, rice, beans, drenching green sauce with cheese. I love that one. And I also have another one with a, a little weird name, the Schwarzenegger tacos. Okay. So there's this hard shell shrimp tacos with pico de gallo and melted cheese. So good. Those things have been taken off. So. Oh, come on. All right. Well, I definitely know where I'm going to lunch on Tuesday for sure. So we'll figure <laughs> that one out. Next, uh, Liz is is traveling with me. So I'm, I'm bringing Liz Smiley with me. All right. Yeah, we'd love to meet her. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Another um, fellow producer. I know, right? She'll yeah. love it too. Oh, it'd be so good. Now, tell me about your podcast. Um, who do you yeah. who do you have? What's the format? What's the flow? Tell me a little bit about uh, what you do on that. Yeah, so right now it's a one person podcast. So I'm the host, and uh, it's just me having a conversation with you in your ear, and we go through different topics. All all are focused on on the restaurant life, on the restaurateur life. You know, it's a very high demanding industry. You're always on your feet, very low work life balance, and we go through there and we try to find out how to keep going, how to not throw in the towel and how, what strategies I use to find time for Toastmasters, to find time to take FOT, to find time for this. And I, I, I go through all of that in my podcast and I try to give you motivation and I call them restaurant heroes. So that's how I address my listeners. I'm like, mm. welcome my restaurant heroes because they are restaurant heroes. Everything, everybody in the industry is a, is a total hero. If you've been there, you understand how hard it is. Yeah. Sure. yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and with a, with a, you know, a national average of like a 10%, you know, yeah. ROI, you know, yeah. when it comes to owning a restaurant, right. It's mm -hmm. that those margins are so small. Yeah. And it sounds like you're seeing the margins expand because of the way that you're accurately thinking about expanding your business. Correct. Is that what you're finding? Is that the bottom Correct. line? And catering actually has bigger margins. So oh. if I look at my margins just from the, you know, table service, yes, they're about 10%. They hover around there. But catering, I'm finding they're more close to 50. That's wow. that's a lot. That's a big one. So I rather do caterings. And the reason for it's because you have more control of it. So mm -hmm. I weigh everything and I portion everything. So you have better control, which lets you have a bigger margin. Versus over here in the kitchen, somebody messes something up. There goes your food cost. Somebody throws in more cheese. So it's it's harder to control versus catering. So I make more in a catering as profit than regular table service. Yeah. Wow. And that's so good. That makes me so happy. Uh, that's, that's so, I mean, you literally can take the price of what you paid for FOT and you can actually show the return on investment oh, year absolutely. over year, over year, over year, over year, since you designed it here. Yeah. Uh, no royalty checks needed. I'm fine. <laughs> Thank you. I just, just, you just live a happy life and I'll be good. Do you guys have a California burrito on the menu? Of course. Okay. Game on. All right. We're good. <laughs> I might need one. Uh, no salsa fresca. Now, um, I love all of this for so many reasons, but I want to kind of wrap us up in, in the sense of you have now taken what you've learned and you've continued to practice it for a few months. You, I think mm -hmm. you finished back in December or, or finished the of the February. February. Yes. Now, you've had some time to practice this and, and, and continue to do it. I'd love you to teach me something or teach our listeners something about teamwork. There's so many things that you've kind of pressed upon, mm -hmm. but I'd love you to kind of, you become the expert for a moment and tell me something that I probably need to know about business life, something like that. Give me, give me some wisdom from, from, from what you've been studying and practicing over the last few months. I think um, one of the biggest things is that we can't go at it alone. Mm -hmm. We really can't. Sometimes we try to be Superman or Superwoman and we really can't go at it alone. We need help we always there's always going to be time you're going to, you're going to need help they're building a website building a menu anything social media you we're not experts on everything and we're going to need help and i think we're going to need to learn how to transact for that help look for that help and i always love that quote that you know if you want to go far go alone if you, if you i mean if you want to go fast go alone if you want to go far go together Mm -hmm. And I think that's what I would want your everybody that's listening right now is to understand that we can't go at it alone. Like you need to get that in your mind that you can't do this alone. Nobody's really self-made. Somebody always put some success into them and helped them along their journey. That's so good. And if you love wisdom like that, 
from a voice like that, from a face like that, from a mustache and beard like <laughs> that, which I haven't seen, which is new. You need to listen to the Your Life in Restaurant podcast. And Jose, where, where can they listen to that podcast? Where can they find it? Any platform, Spotify, uh, Apple Podcast, any any platform. We're all on them. Or you could listen directly from the website as well. And I would, if you really think, if you're a restaurant owner, if you're a restaurant leader looking for some motivation, inspiration, guidance, knowledge, you want to jump on it and subscribe. And right, there's a lot of podcasts already up there that you could listen to. Well, there was a time where I worked in the industry and was the party guy for the city of Ventura throwing corporate events. If that's ever a topic on the podcast, you let me know. I've got some specialized knowledge there. Jose, okay. <laughs> thank you, my friend. Wonderful to have you on today. And I'll talk with you later after the podcast. I'll give you a call. Sounds good. Well, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. And it was a my pleasure. pleasure. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap up with a couple things that I heard and then we'll uh, get out of here. But I'll start with this. Jose is one of those guys that when I first met him, I knew he was special and he works his butt off. I mean, he really goes to town in studying the linguistic distinctions that we teach and really applying what he learned. I would say that of, of many of the people that have done the podcast over the last year and a half, when we get the notes back from different people, they're pretty plain. Sometimes you have to kind of dig through them and, and get out. Jose used so many linguistic distinctions and have so many of those memorized and used that it's so practical for him. It's not something he has to search very hard to find. I highly recommend listening to his podcast because that guy is wiser than his years and is someone who is a champion for young business professionals. I'm telling you, that is the exact person that I always want to meet because he came in, did the work, and now he's reaping the benefits. So Jose, on behalf of everyone here at Influential You, congratulations on your success. Can't wait to find out more. Can't wait to see more. And I do hope you can join us on Tuesday next week for our accelerator in Burbank. Y'all are invited. It's going to be, if you're in the Los Angeles area or you want to fly to Los Angeles area, we will be there on Tuesday. Uh, what month is it? August 29th, 2023. If you're listening to this in the future, you can find us somewhere on our website. Now, if you'd like to know more about us, the website to go to for these accelerators and different events is influentialu.global. There you can explore our courses, consulting, and conferences. We offer a four-year curriculum for those that are seeking an advanced experience. However, if you're brand new to Influential U, we recommend that you start with Thrive. It's our self-guided training. Thrive is a self-guided program that lets you learn at your own pace. Thrive members enjoy weekly live e-coaching sessions and an ever-expanding library of exclusive video lessons with our faculty, thought leaders, and industry experts. And if you're listening to me live, you can download it right now and jump on with me as we go into reinvention today in just about 20 minutes. So stop what you're doing, download Thrive, get in there. You're going to get 30 free days to try out our proven proprietary tools that will accurately assess your career and develop a realistic strategy to achieve your aims faster. That membership also includes chat access to our faculty, and you can sign up today and use the promo code 30DAYS. That's 30DAYS for a free 30-day test drive of Thrive. That code, once again, is 30DAYS, and you may cancel at any time. Thank you for listening. Each week, we stream live at 2 p.m. Pacific on our website, Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube, so you can easily share this with others. You can also subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, or any place that you get quality podcasts. If you check out our show notes, you'll be find links to connect with our guests, plus links for websites, books, special downloads, the things that we talked about in today's episode, and it's all right there in the show notes. This podcast is made possible by the influential you staff, faculty, and members all around the world, with a special thanks to our executive producer, Tyson Crandall, and contributions from John Patterson, our in-studio producer, Michael Teehee, thank you, Joey Anderley, Daryl Anderley, Paul West, and Liz Smiley. And a special thanks to our guest, Jose Lamas Gonzalez. And if what he said today speaks to you, please support him. Go listen to his podcast, Your Life and Restaurant Podcast. I'm probably going to be on there soon because he likes me so much, and I'm, I'm really going to lay it on thick that he really needs me as a guest. The link to that show is in the show notes. The Influential You Podcast is produced by Influence Ecology, LLC in Ventura, California. This episode was recorded on August 23rd, 2023. The podcast theme is by Chris Standring, entitled Fast Train to Everywhere. And if you haven't yet offered a rating or review, come on. 
This helps me. Help me. I ask that you take a moment, go to iTunes or your podcast app, and let us know what you think. This rating helps us more than you know. We will see you next time on the Influential You podcast. Thank you.